Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory always. Amen. I invite you to take out your uh, outlines and fill them in. Again, remember, just this year, we're going to really hopefully make a commitment to, to keep these for the year and, and maybe pray over them, reflect on them during the week. We pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time. Just to be in your word in 2022, we're so excited for what you have for us. We adore you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Again, Happy New Year. I love thinking about the possibilities that come our way in a new year. I mean, it's a great time to talk to the Lord and about the plans he has for our life, the desires. It's a good time to ask him what he would have us do in this new year. Proverbs 29 says, Where there is no vision, the people are unrestrained, but happy is he who keeps the law. And the idea here is where there's no prophetic word of God, then uh, the, 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 there's no truth from God. The, the people don't have any boundaries. They don't know what to do. But with God's word, there is direction. And so today, we want to learn from God's word how we can let go of the worries and struggles and problems of this past year and move forward with faith and excitement into the new year. That's why New Year's is such an exciting time. Uh, we want to face this new year with a new attitude. Now, for many people, 2021 was a really hard year. I know, personally speaking, the, the very end of 2021 was terrible. I was so sick. I did not have COVID, but uh, I was not well at all. And it still is nothing compared to what a lot of people went through, because I know, well, it could be for me. I know a lot of people who had COVID this past year. And in fact, I know that when we get through into these, these Christmas and, and January, that it's really a hard time for a lot of people because uh, there, there's a heightened sense of loneliness. It, it might be the first time that they have gone through this season all along, it might be because of a death of a loved one, and I know we've had a lot of funerals here. It might be because of a divorce or a move or for whatever reason, but this is the first year and they find themselves alone. Then, when you add all the other craziness from the year into the mix, it's just hard. I have crime rates have gone just bazonkers this year. Uh, I, I read how the cases of severe depression have skyrocketed this past year. And as a result, the number of suicides is, is on the rise. Alcohol sales have reached their highest level ever. Uh, our, our nation is more divided than I've ever seen it. Families are being torn. It's just been terrible. It's been a hard year. Thinking about it, talking about it just makes me a little depressed. And so what we need to do then, if we're going to push forward, we need to forget what lies behind. Paul says, one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead. Now, again, beloved, if we focus on all the struggles that we've been through, it's going to give us this defeated attitude. Focusing on the failures and hurts and struggles of the past year sets us up to move forward in failure because our outlook is not very good. And so Paul says one thing, one thing, one thing I do is forget what lies behind. I don't focus on that anymore. Focusing on the past is an easy trap to fall into. For example, for example, how many times have you heard or even said, I am so ready for the shutdown to end? Or, or <laughs> I'm not going to church until that mask mandate is lifted. And we get so focused in on the difficulty and the pain and the shutdown and the wearing the mask and all that kind of stuff that it affects our attitude and it spills over into so many other areas of our life, including worship. It, it becomes difficult then to have hope for the future. 
That attitude prevents us from moving forward in faith. That, that attitude keeps us from the joy of being in worship with the Lord and, and just the joy of being around our church family. So we want to forget. One thing I do, I forget what lies behind and focus on what lies ahead. Paul says, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upper call of God in Christ Jesus. The truth is, January starts off really tough. Uh, we heard it in the children's sermon, at least in the kids from the kids earlier, that if you're young, you know, the presents, they're all done. Christmas is over. And, and school starts this week. Or if you're not quite that young, uh, you might have had a couple of days off, and now it's time to go back to work. That's hard enough, and it's cold outside. The days are short. January can be a tough month. Now, this attitude comes from focusing on the struggles, focusing on what lies behind in our past experiences. But we want to turn our hearts and our minds to God and his word and what he's doing. And when we do that, it just changes everything. And we are filled with hope and excitement for what God has for us. And but we can't allow the enemy to hold us back. The devil wants to plant these thoughts of defeat in our mind. But Paul says, we are destroying speculation and every lofty thing raised up against the knowledge of God and we are taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. We forget what lies behind, and we push forward in victory, a victory that's already been won and given to us. In fact, Paul says, but in all these things we overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us. I plan on living in that victory in 2022. I'm excited about what God has in store for us. And we cannot allow the enemy to win the battle for the mind. And so we want to renew the way we think, and, and we want to concentrate, to focus in on what God is doing and what he has for us. And we know. We know God has good plans. Jeremiah, God says in Jeremiah 29, I know the plans I have for you. Not plans for welfare, but to give you a hope and a future. Paul says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. And so we want to renew our mind by God's word so that we can have this attitude of victory that God has for us in 2022. We see this all the time in Scripture, that, that God's people didn't focus on the failures of the past. They lived in the victory that Christ won for them. They lived with the hope of what God was doing, for example. Uh, one example of many. Paul wrote, I can do all things through him who gives me strength. Now, Paul wrote those words from a Roman prison facing potential ex execution. And even facing death, he, he knew, he knew God had good things in store for him. In fact, he said before that, he said, for to me, to live is Christ. To die is gain. So no matter what happens, I, I know, I know God's got something good. I, I'm pressing on. I'm looking forward. I'm moving ahead because God's got good for me. So as we turn the page on a new calendar, it, it reminds us that God is giving us a new beginning, a new start. The old's passed away. The new has come. And this first Sunday of a church year, man, oh man, we want to encourage you to make this, this commitment to focus on spiritual things, to focus on what God has for you and join him in his work in this world. And, and so make a new commitment for the new year. And make this the best year ever by setting some spiritual goals. Now, I, I want you to catch this. I don't call these resolutions because resolutions feels like they're focused on past failures. For example, you know, I, I resolve to lose 15 pounds. And it's focused in on the weight that you may have put on over Christmas. I resolve to get back in shape. Again, it's focused on being out of shape. Uh, but goals, goals are focused on the future. Instead of, uh, I, I, you know, I have a goal to read the New Testament. I have a goal to shed 15 pounds. It's not focused on the past failures, but future promise. So we want to set some goals, spiritual goals, what God has for us. 
And we want to have an attitude that's going to move us forward in faith and life, an attitude of victory. Paul would say, therefore, if you have been raised up with Christ, keep seeking the things above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above and not on the things on earth, for you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Focus in on the victory he's won for us. And the reason, the reason is because much of life is truly a spiritual battle. If you think about it, most, most of the battles and struggles we face in life are fought and won in the mind. That's why Paul would say, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of darkness, against spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. The devil wants us to live a defeated, beat-down life, to act like we're a failure. And when we focus on what lies behind, it's easy to feel that way. But even worse, the devil doesn't stop there. He wants us to think that we can just force ourselves to do better. You know, uh, 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 we, can, we can resolve to lose weight. We can be resolved to get in shape. We can resolve to, to read the Bible and pray. We'll just force ourselves to do it. We'll determine to have hope. <laughs> I'm telling you, beloved, but that's the reason 80%, I'm not making this number up, that's the reason 80% of resolutions fail by the second week in February because the battle's fought in the mind. It's a spiritual battle. Having said that now, focusing on spiritual things doesn't remove the stress and struggles we face, but it makes a huge difference in our ability to get past the struggle and live in the victory that Jesus has won for us. So here's some principles to help you live in that victory in this new year. Number one, forget your failures. Forget your failures. God's forgotten them. Psalm 103 says, As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. All of us have failures. All of us have made some mistakes, and some of us, like me, have made some really huge mistakes. And Satan loves to remind us of our sin and failures. But the good news is, Jesus has already paid for all our mistakes, not some, not most, all of them. He took all our sin upon himself and died in our place. He took the full punishment for all our sin. And then he forgives and forgets it. He rose from the dead to, that we might be forgiven and given life. And so once we've confessed our sin, Jesus forgives and forgets. So I don't have to feel guilty anymore. And any time the enemy, any time the devil reminds me of my sin, I just turn to him and praise the name of Jesus, who has not only forgiven me, but he's forgotten all that sin. And I don't feel guilty anymore. If, if you still feel guilt about a past sin, it means that you don't fully understand all your sin. All of it is forgiven and forgotten by God. That's why Paul says, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all, all unrighteousness. I heard someone once say, and it's always stuck with me, that when you confess your sin, God forgives and forgets. But the devil shoots these little fiery missiles and, and tries to remind you, and, and then you feel guilty again. You go, oh, God, remember that, that sin I told you about yesterday? And God just says, what? What sin? Because he's forgotten, and we've got to remind. I don't want to remind God of my past mistakes. So the way to get rid of it, the way to be set free is to turn that to praise, because the enemy does not want you praising the name of Jesus. So the moment you begin to feel guilt, immediately take it to God and say, God, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for taking away my sin, setting me free, removing it completely. Thank you, Jesus, and praise the name of Jesus. And then don't worry about tomorrow. Since this has been such a tough year for so many, it can feel like we're never going to move forward. We're never going to change. And that happens as we focus on the struggles of the past. And it could cause us to lose hope for the future. And it causes us to worry about tomorrow. But Jesus said, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will care for itself. Each day has enough trouble 
of its own. <laughs> Amen. Jesus promises that God knows our needs, so just trust our tomorrow for him and seek him for the day. It's easy. It's easy to get worried about this shutdown. It's going to last forever. We're never going to get rid of our mask. And what happens are, are those worries get our mind off of what is truly important. And so we seek God for today, and we know our tomorrow is secure. We rest in his presence and grace. We know we, know we are his. And so we press on toward the prize of that upper call of God in Christ Jesus. Like the song says, the cross before me, the world behind me. No turning back. No turning back. Uh, and now, again, I'm not saying this is always easy, but there is no better way to go. Corey Tinboom, who wrote The Hiding Place, which, by the way, if you've never read it, you should. And it's an easy read. It's in our library. Corey Tinboom, who survived the horrors of a Nazi prison camp, concentration camp, where her sister died, Corey Ten Boom wrote, Worry does not empty tomorrow of sorrows. It empties today of strength. That is so profound. Worry does not empty tomorrow of sorrows. It empties today of strength. And so as we enter into this new year, don't let the enemy fill your life with worry so that you have no strength for the day. Live in the present. Walk with the Lord. Give him your worries. And then live in the present. Live in the present. Psalm 118 says, This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And beloved, we want to make each day count. And the way we do that is by rejoicing in the Lord. We do that by being thankful to him. In fact, Paul says, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. It's God's will. Now, notice he doesn't say give thanks for everything because we know not everything is good. He says give thanks in everything because we know that when we give it to God, we trust him with it, he has this ability to bring good out of it. So we're just, we're going to give him thanks. Uh, and, and this is learned. It takes time. For example, uh, I don't like this crazy mask mandate, but I'm not going to allow it to steal my joy or cause me to live in defeat. I know God's still out there. He's still on his throne. He still inhabits the praise of his people. And even though I don't like it, I know, I know, I know God can do something good with it. And he has. He's used this to get us online faster than we anticipated. And now we get to hear from people all over the country that uh, listen and worship with us. That's reason to rejoice. I don't like social distancing, but I know I can still call the people I love and, or FaceTime with them. I know that this day, this day belongs to the Lord. So if I'm going to live in the present, that means I need to renew my strength each day. Isaiah 40 says, Do you not know, have you not heard, the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, does not become weary or tired? His understanding is inscrutable. He gives strength to the weary. And to him who lacks might, he increases power. So what that means then is I, I turn to the Lord who gives me strength. The, he is my source of strength. And the way this happens is by spending time with God, he renews my strength. That means I read the Bible as much as I can. And, and when I read God's word, I'm putting on the mind of Christ. I'm taking every thought captive. And, and, and I'm not saying, by the way, I'm not saying you've got to read the Bible through in a year. I'm not even saying you have to read a whole chapter a day. I'm, I'm telling you, read a chapter a day, read a verse a day. I don't care, but just read it. If you miss a day, don't be discouraged. Uh, just pick it up the next day. Or listen to, uh, 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 listen to it online as you're in the car or driving or walking. But I promise you this, it is always, always going to be helpful. And then talk to God daily. Again, it doesn't have to be long prayers. In fact, Jesus said, when you are praying, do not use meaningless repetition as the Gentiles do, for they suppose that they will be heard for their many words. Just talk to him. Again, you can do this as you drive. Just quick little prayers. Uh, or or um, do it at the dinner table. 
or just talk. It just takes a minute, but just do it. And then one more challenge, be in a Bible study this year. Uh, uh, and we got two new ones starting next weekend. Great time to start the new year. Uh, Galatians or, or how we got the Bible and how important it is for our daily life. Uh, so join us for that. And, and watch what God does. Make this the best year ever, knowing that God's going to do something extraordinary and great. Set some spiritual goals. Serve Him with joy. In the name of Jesus. Amen? And now may the peace of God that surpasses all our human understanding keep our hearts and minds forever fixed on the author, the perfecter of our faith, our Lord, our Savior, Jesus. Amen?